Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode of Gizmo Joe. Today, we are going to be taking a look at heat sinks and fans for the Raspberry Pi. Now, the Raspberry Pi, for those of you who don't know, is a single board computer uh, that is capable of doing a variety of different things. There's lots of uh, different operating systems out there for it. You can turn it into a file server. You can turn it into a media playback device. You could use it for retro gaming. Uh, like I said, there's just tons and tons of stuff that you can do with the little Raspberry Pi. So in front of me here is my Raspberry Pi. I have the official Pi Foundation case on it, but if we take it apart, you can see that my Pi is inside here. So those of you who aren't familiar with the Raspberry Pi, I'll just quickly take the case off so that you guys can see what it looks like. So this one here is the Raspberry Pi 3. Um, it is not the 3B+, plus, but it is just the 3B. So this one has a quad-core processor and one gigabyte of RAM. And as you can see, everything is just on the one board. So you have four USB ports, you got an Ethernet port, you have HDMI, uh, and a variety, like the general purpose input-output pins so you can expand its capabilities and all that sort of thing. Uh, but basically, the reason why I bought this was because I wanted to play some old games. And... Uh, for that purpose, there's tons of different software options. So you can use things like RetroPie or Recallbox. And I've played around with a whole bunch of different ones. And the one that I'm running currently is the newest version of Recallbox, which is 6.0. I believe they call it Dragon Blade. I'll leave a link down in the description if you want to check that out. I like Recallbox because a lot of it is just kind of plug and play um, with... RetroPie, there's a little bit more configuration that you have to do, a lot of little manual type stuff that in Recallbox is um, kind of automatically configured. Anyway, long story short, uh, those of you who do use the Raspberry Pi for uh, emulation, you'll know that you can't run everything. So this Raspberry Pi 3 is capable of running things like PSP, PlayStation 1 games, uh, Dreamcast games, stuff like that. But I've had issues with a variety of different games on all of those platforms. Even Nintendo 64, uh, it can struggle quite a bit. So one of the cool things about Recall Box is that uh, as opposed to RetroPie, where you have to kind of go into the command line and overclock your CPU, Recall Box has it straight in the graphical uh, menu. So you can just kind of tick it over and say, yep, I want to overclock it. The Pi itself will reboot and you're running at a faster clock speed. So those of you who uh, don't know what the hell I'm talking about, and none of that made any sense, basically the Raspberry Pi has uh, the CPU and GPU all on this one SOC, which is a system on chip. Um, that is what's responsible for essentially doing whatever you're asking it to do. Uh, think of it as kind of like the brain, I guess, of the Raspberry Pi. Now, you can make this thing run faster, which means that it is capable of doing a little bit more. It's a little bit more powerful. You can squeeze a little more juice out of the Raspberry uh, if you overclock it. Overclock it just means that you're making it run faster. Now, there's a couple dangers to this. If you overclock something, um, number one, there's always a chance that you could essentially fry uh, any of the components on here because whenever you have an electrical device like a computer or whatever, it generates heat. And if you're making it run faster, it's going to generate even more heat. So that could uh, damage any variety of components on this little tiny board, but you're probably going to end up damaging your CPU, in which case this guy, if you fry it, it just won't boot. And essentially you've got a fancy looking, I guess, paperweight. Now, there are a couple of things that you can do in order to uh, overclock a Raspberry Pi and make it a little bit safer. And one of those things is by adding cooling devices to it. Now there's a couple different ways that you can cool your Raspberry Pi. Uh, there's some extreme ways like water cooling and stuff like that. I'm not going to get into that in this video because I think that's a bit overkill for what I'm trying to do. Uh, but there are some pretty easy ways to do it. So you can find uh, cooling uh, options on a variety of different websites. They're all over eBay, Amazon, Adafruit.com. I mean, you name it. Anybody who's associated with the Raspberry Pi will have these things kind of floating around, and they're super cheap. I bought this kit because I'm in Australia, so I wanted something that had local stock um, from a, a eBay retailer in Australia. So basically, what we're looking at, this little box, 
I'll put a link in the description as well if you're looking to get one. This little box had a tiny little fan and a couple heat sinks. All right, so I'll put the fan off to the side for a second because everybody knows what a fan is. Basically moves air around. But let's take a look at these heat sinks. Now, this was a cheap kit. It was only about $7. That's Australian dollars, so U.S. dollars, probably looking at a little bit less than $5 or so. Uh, but heat sinks are essentially these little things that you kind of adhere to the chips. Okay, so you just plop it right on there. Now there's a couple different ones. So you have these these ones here, which are made out of copper. All right, And then you have this type, which is made out of aluminum. All right. So basically how heat sinks work is they're affixed to a chip on your board, right? So you'd like the CPU or whatever. And what it does is it acts as a passive sort of cooling. So it draws heat away from the CPU or whatever chip it's sitting on and transfers that heat into these fins. I know it's hard to see, but it basically transfers the heat up into these fins, which allows the heat to be dissipated into the air. All right, so that's basically how they work. So that's what you call passive cooling, because all you're doing is just sticking something on there that essentially cools it down a little bit. Now, I know what you're saying. You're saying, Gizmo, what is the difference between the aluminum and the copper? Well, aluminum typically, they are cheaper. Uh, they're cheaper to produce, uh, and they're just cheaper in general because it's a cheaper material. Copper is a little bit more expensive, and they're a little bit harder to fabricate, so you're looking at probably spending a little bit more for these guys. Now, which one do you use? Well, I would always recommend the copper heat sinks. This is because copper has better sort of thermal conductivity compared to the aluminum heat sinks. Uh, aluminum's great in, in a pinch. I mean, like I said, they're cheap. You can find a ton of them all over the place, and it's better than nothing. But if you have the option, definitely go with copper. It's just got a better thermal conductivity, uh, which means that you'll draw more heat out of there. Anyway, so all of these guys come with these like little adhesive pads, and they're like thermal adhesive, and basically they're designed so that you just peel that off and you plop it right down on there. It will stick on there, and then basically you have some cool, uh, passive cooling um, applied to your uh, Raspberry Pi. Now this little guy is designed for, I think that's the RAM chip, or maybe the ethernet controller or something or the usb controller but that generates a little bit of heat i'll put it on there just because i have it but this isn't really necessary uh the one that you want to make sure that you stick a heat sink on is your soc because that's what's going to be generating the most amount of heat and that's what's going to impact your performance now put that off to the side these little fans, you can get a variety of different fans. Uh, there's all different cases out there for the Raspberry Pi, so depending on which case you have, you might be able to get a different fan or whatever. Uh, but this little fan here, you'll notice it says Pi fan on there, which is kind of cute. This is a 30 by 30 millimeter fan. So now I chose this one because again, I'm just running some emulators and stuff. I'm not really pushing this guy to the limit. So I just wanted something that can move some air around. So now the principle behind fans is obviously this whole board is gonna be generating heat and it's better to have the air circulating around uh, rather than let it you know, sit there, especially when you have a case on it. Okay, so now the Raspberry Pi official case uh, kind of clips on like this. So basically you don't have to have the top bit or the sides on it, which is really, really handy. Because if you put the top bit on, you put the sides on, obviously there's no place for the heat to escape, right? All this hot air gets stuck in there. And it's the same sort of principle if you were using any sort of PC uh, with a case. So what's really cool about this is that you can take the sides off. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to affix this fan to the top of this. Now normally what you would do is you would cut a hole in the top, but I don't really want to do that because I don't have the tools to do it. But I'm going to stick this guy on there like that, or actually I'll probably flick him around like this. And uh, obviously plug it in, and I'll tell you how to plug it in so that it works. And then when I pop the top on, I'm going to leave the sides off so that I can get some airflow uh, through the sides as opposed to the top, which is normally how it would work. So. Uh, obviously in the case you get some nuts and bolts and stuff so I'll probably have to drill some holes in here so I'll make some marks and I'll figure out where it's going to fit and then I'll fix it using the nuts and bolts. 
Um, and then when I pop the top on, that's how it's going to look. It will just be open there, uh, etc. Anyway, when you have these little fans, it doesn't matter which fan you get, but you'll see it's a red wire and a black wire, so that's your polarity. Uh, what you want to do is you want to take this and you're going to want to stick it onto the GPIO pins, which again is general purpose uh, input output pins. So you want to stick the red one on that pin right there. So it's the second one in on the outer row. Okay, so it's the second one there. So that's where the red wire goes. The black one goes right next to it. So if you see, I'll just quickly do it so you get your red and your black. And so there's the outer the outer row of pins. And you just plug it in like that. And when you put power to your Pi, this will spin. Now again, uh, this little fan is going to be really, really quiet because it's only 30 by 30 millimeters. You can get bigger ones, more powerful ones that will push more air around. But I didn't want something that was super noisy. Um, the Raspberry Pi lives up in my bedroom, so like when the missus is sleeping, I'll fire up some Castlevania or something like that uh, if I can't fall asleep. So I don't want anything that makes a ton of noise. So that's why I opted for this little kit. You got some cool uh, passive cooling options and a fan. Now. You're probably wondering what the heck this is. Now this is a tube of what they call thermal grease or thermal paste. All right, so this is Arctic Silver 5. I had this left over. Uh, it's a 3.5 gram little tube. I had some of this left over from a previous PC build, and I'm going to use it to essentially affix my heat sinks. Whoops. So like I said before, these guys have like some thermal tape on here. Now the thermal tape helps to pull the heat away from the chip into the heat sink so that, again, it can dissipate that heat throughout the air. Thermal paste does a way better job than the tape that's on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that tape off. I'm going to probably scrub it down with some isopropyl alcohol so that it's nice and clean. And then I'm just going to shoot a tiny little dollop just right in the center of that chip, and then I'll push this guy down, and it should be enough to just kind of adhere it there. Um, now, in a normal PC, you usually have a couple different things that kind of affix everything into place because sometimes, you know, your motherboard's on the side or whatever. Uh, but with the Raspberry Pi, it just kind of sits there. But it should stick it down just enough. So, all said and done, I'll have the heat sink there. I'll have the fan going on the underneath. I'll have the sides open. We should get enough airflow and passive cooling to reduce the temperature a couple degrees. Now the Raspberry Pi 3 and um, well, pretty much all the Raspberry Pis are designed to run pretty hot because they don't have any cooling uh, and they're really tiny and you know whatever. Um, so they're designed to run at about 80 degrees Celsius but if you're really pushing the limits of your Pi, if you're overclocking it etc then it's going to run a bit hotter and as I mentioned before you can potentially damage irreparably your board or uh, Best case scenario, I guess, is that the CPU will recognize that it's running too hot and it will throttle its performance in order to cool itself down, which you obviously don't want because if you're in the middle of trying to play Goldeneye or whatever and all of a sudden, you know, the CPU starts to cut juice, you're not going to, it's going to render it unplayable. So, uh, anyway, I will essentially affix everything and then I'll show you guys uh, what it looks like at the end. So, stick around. Okay, so as you can see, I have applied both uh, the heat sinks. So I have one heat sink on the SOC and another one on, I'm pretty sure that's the USB Ethernet controller. Like I said, uh, that's an optional one. Uh, it doesn't really generate a whole heck of a lot of heat, so you won't see a huge performance jump if you do uh, apply one there. However, I had it, I figured what the heck, might as well chuck it on there. Um, the copper one is going to be the one that draws away the most heat, you'll see the best performance out of that. It should drop uh, the overall temperature by a degree or two. Now, there's the Pi fan. This little guy is pretty quiet. Again, it's a 30 by 30 millimeter. Now, I didn't bother uh, drilling holes into the top, although I will eventually because uh, it's just better to secure it on there. Right now, I've just got some uh, like little Velcro um, or a hook and loop system sort of thing, just adhering it into place. But as you can see, I've got the wires uh, in the correct polarity. So again, this is going to force air onto that SOC. And like I said, 
if you have a cover on the top of yours like I have on mine, you probably want to leave those side things off because you will actually, when you power this up, if you put your hand in front of it, you will feel the air coming out either ends. If you close those up, then there's not going to be anywhere for the air to go really and uh, you might see a dip in performance. Now, what uh, were my results? Well, they were somewhat mixed. Uh, with Nintendo 64, I was getting, I was playing GoldenEye, uh, which usually is pretty tricky for the Raspberry Pi to handle. I was playing it, and it was, you know, averaging around, I want to say, about 45 frames per second. Uh, there were portions of the game, especially in the interior corridors, where it was jumping up to 75 frames a second, well over the 60 that you would need in order for it to be playable. Uh, but overall, it was pretty smooth. I didn't really experience any uh, drawbacks to that. Now, PSP is still problematic. Some games were relatively good. Other games, not so great. For instance, Wipeout, forget it. Uh, barely runs. Virtua Tennis, barely runs. Uh, you're talking about, you know, 15, 20 frames a second. It's just very, very slow. Uh, other games like NHL 2007, uh, Street Fighter Alpha 3, those sort of games were running at 60 frames per second, no problem. Now, the other thing I wanted to overclock this Raspberry Pi for was to uh, essentially use the Kodi, which is built into uh, Recall Box. Now, I was having issues playing back files that were in that 265 format, or H265, that codec, uh, which is that high-efficiency codec. Now, once I overclocked it, I was getting playback on some files that I was getting absolutely zero playback from. However, there was a bit of stuttering. There was a little bit of, um, you know, video kind of... Uh, not syncing up with the audio sort of thing. So, um, again, mixed bag there as well. I need to do a few more tests to see if I can tweak it a little bit further. But overall, cooling your Pi will definitely uh, increase the performance. And these kits are really, really cheap. Like I said, I'll leave a link in the description down below so you can pick up one yourself. Uh, this is only about $7 Australian, so it's definitely worth it. Anyway, that's going to do it for today. Thanks for watching. And I will catch you next time. This is Gizmo Joe signing off.